This Iranian film is a tragicomedy, a love story of a family who is on a journey of separation. The heartache, repressed sentiments, sacrifice and humor all are well-knitted in this movie. It has political unrest in Iran in its backdrop and subtle hints of the rebellion. A family of four from Tehran are traveling on a road across rural areas of Iran, apparently the northwest. In the back seat is Khosro, the patriarch of the family. He is a pan-faced, grumpy and bare of a man. He has his one leg in a plaster cast. His wife is in the passenger seat. Their eldest son, Farid, is driving the car. He is a quiet young man. To balance the melancholic air in the car is their younger son who is impulsive, lively and nonchalant. And then there is an ailing dog along with them, Jesse. The quartet borrowed this car for an illegal trip. They are heading to a border, apparently Turkish, to smuggle their eldest son out of the country for reasons unexplained. The adults want to keep their younger son unaware of the truth lest he spills it out to anyone and put the family in danger. Khosro is sleeping in the backseat. The little one who has doodled all over his father's cast is touching it to the annoyance of his father. Mother is also napping in the front seat. Farid has pulled over and gone to take a leak. He comes back to the car, takes a look at Jesse in the dickey and reclines against the bonnet. Mother opens her eyes and asks where are they. The child replies they are no more. His funny reply brings a smile to her face. She hears a phone vibrate. She turns around to face the child and asks him to give up his phone. They made sure not to bring any phones. The child somehow has brought one sneakingly. Now when he is caught, he tries to act as if he doesn't know what his mother is talking about. Kasra wakes up to the noise of the argument. He asks the child to take out the phone. He had warned him against it before leaving the home. The child keeps denying that he has a phone. Kasra says they will throw him out for lying. He starts searching for it in his clothes. The child surrenders and reaches out in his pants to take out the phone. He complains to his parents that they were going to kick him out of the car over the phone. Kasro is sickened at the phone kept inside the pants. Mother takes out the SIM and cuts it. Kasro holds back the child as he wrestles to stop his mother. She gets out of the car. She is going to bury the phone in the sand. Kasro tries to calm the child, saying they will pick it up on the way back. The child jumps out of the car to stop his mother. Farid brings him back into the car. The child says the phone is costly. He tells Kasro he needs it to answer calls. It will worry someone if he doesn't attend the calls. Kasro wants to keep the child engaged while the mother finishes hiding the phone. He asks the child about this person who will get worried for him. The child mentions Madame Fakhri's daughter whom he likes. He praises her beauty and says they have the plan to marry each other. He keeps trying to look around at his mother while talking. Kasro continues distracting him and says the girl's father will beat him for marrying her. The child says he will beat him instead. He loosens himself from Kasro's grip and dashes towards his mother. Mother is already returning to the car. She stops him from going any further. The child starts looking at the beautiful scenery of the hills around. He prostrates and kisses the earth. His mother asks him to not get dust on his clothes. He says he is sorry. Both look at the mountains and find them looking like a frog and a cake. Farid and Kasro look at both. Kasro feels an ache in his tooth. He closes his eyes for a moment and opens them. They have a sadness lurking in them. He uses his cane to reach out for a bag of pistachio on the dashboard. They all get back inside the car. Kasro enumerates the steps of the cockpit drill for Farid. The child says he is anxious. Miss Fakre will break up with him for not receiving her calls. He and Kasro are munching on pistachios while mother pairs Kasro's toenails. The child addresses each of them sarcastically for not worrying about his impending heartbreak. Mother asks him to calm down. He must not sulk as all the adults have also complied with her instruction of no cell phones. The child stands in his seat to look at Jesse. He says he looks exhausted. No one has told the child of Jesse's bad health. Kasro starts talking about Ermia Lake. He pelts Farid with a pistachio shell to make him say something. Farid doesn't budge. The child has started doodling over the car's window with a marker and is proud of his artwork. Kasro pecks him on the cheeks but then is furious after noticing the marker is an indelible one. He tries to wipe the window, complaining about his son's driving him broke. The car is expensive and needs to be returned to the lender in pristine condition. Mother whispers to Farid and Kasro that they are being followed. The child overhears that and gets excited as if this is an action film. He asks Jesse to duck and his bad guys are after them. Mother asks Farid to park the car in a rest area nearby. She wants everyone to act normal. It turns out to be a false alarm when the driver who was behind them pulls over and tells them their car's gas is leaking. He was signaling them earlier for this. Kasro scratches his toes with an antenna and tells Farid that it is coolant leakage, not the gas. Farid ignores Kasro and raises the hood to look at the problem. Mother asks the child to take out Jesse. She finds it really is a coolant that is leaking. Kasra raises his eyebrow as if to say told you. He is standing near the road and has lit up a cigarette. The child asks him to hold Jesse and goes up to a shopkeeper to ask him for a cheap but good quality cell phone. The shopkeeper asks him to run along and not disturb him. Some passenger at the rest area confirms it is a coolant leakage. Kasra stands near the road with his gaze fixated on an empty Coke can, being trodden over by cyclists. He steps forward to pick it up, but his bad leg and fast-running vehicles don't let him. 
They all get back inside the car. Kosro chants the cockpit drill and off they set. A pre-revolution ballad is playing on the stereo. It is about shunning the anger and worries because a better tomorrow is to come. Mother is lip-syncing and trying to cheer up the miserable Farid, an attempt to divert their minds from what lies ahead for them. The child is dancing hilariously to the song. Jesse is now in the back seat with Kosro. Farid turns it off and bans the dashboard. He says he isn't a child anymore. He is okay and doesn't need anyone to calm his anxiety. Mother chides him for losing his temper as it has triggered curiosity in the child. He asks if his brother is going somewhere. Kosro says Farid is getting married. Mother laughs when the child says no one will be willing to marry his sullen brother. Kosro asks the child not to worry as Farid will be back soon. Mother finds the chance to distract the child and draws his attention towards the cyclists passing by. The child rolls the window down and sticks his head out to talk to one of them. The child greets him and cheers at him. The cyclist brushes against the car and falls to the ground. Farid stops the car. Kosro asks him to keep driving. The child shouts to ask if the cyclist is alive. Mother and Fairy get out to check on him. They offer to give him a ride. Kosro hands a tissue to the cyclist and asks him to stop crying. The cyclist says he isn't crying. It is just his injured leg. He asks Fairy to drop him at a hospital on the way. Kosro again asks him to not cry. Mother chuckles and forbids Kosro from teasing the poor lad. Kosro asks about the domestiques. The cyclist says the race is organized among his friends and there is a prize for the winner. The child thinks the cyclist can never bike again now. The cyclist says Lance Armstrong became a world champion with his cancer. He looks up to Armstrong and aspires to be like him. Kosro says Armstrong was disqualified for doping. The cyclist says it must be a smear campaign. Kosro says he confessed it himself to the media and gave up his winning badges. The cyclist argues that even if he was dishonest, he still ruled in sports for many years, and gained money and a wife. Kosro says one can get a wife without being a cycling champion. He points at his wife who smiles. The child asks everyone to say prayers for his father who preaches a life of honesty. Mother offers a cucumber to the cyclist. The child gives him pistachios to eat. Kosro doesn't like them, giving everything away. The cyclist deliberately and covertly let the pistachios fall down on the floor. He bends down to gather them. Kosro knows why he is doing this. The car has overtaken his fellow cyclists. He doesn't want to be seen. He had been lagging behind so he bumped into the car on purpose. The car will drop him way ahead of his opponents and he will be able to win the race with ease. While the cyclist picks the scattered pistachios, Kosro murmurs about being honest in life. The cyclist looks up and says one is always critical of other people's behavior, and overlooks his own mistakes. He asks Kosro if he has never cheated in his life or done anything dishonest. The child sips from the cyclist's bottle. Mother takes the bottle away from him, saying the cyclist might be having an infection. He says he doesn't have any. He asks Ferry to drop him off. Kosro says there is no hospital in sight. He says he lives nearby. Kosro is bent upon making him admit his lies. He says he can't see any houses here. Farid helps the cyclist take out his bike from the dicky. Mother asks the child to take Jesse for a leak. Kosro requests the cyclist to take the dog with him and leave him somewhere. Jesse is bound to pass away given his bad health and they don't want the child to see him expire. They say they will tell the child that the cyclist has stolen Jesse. The cyclist refuses and cycles away. Mother calls out to the child to come back to the car. He doesn't listen and plays around. Kosro reprimands Farid for not being careful with his anger and words around the child lately. Mother grumbles about Kosro not taking Jesse to the doctor on time for euthanasia. Farid goes after his little brother who is horsing around. Back in the car, the mother worries about the wildlife around and asks Kosro to go after their sons. Kosro says jokingly, the only beasts here are his two sons so there is no need to worry. He says he can't run after them because of his leg anyways. His wife says she is tired of him bringing up his leg whenever he has to do something. After a moment of silence, she asks if Haosheng is trustworthy. Haosheng is the trafficker they have paid for smuggling ferried out of Iran. Kosro vouches for Haosheng. They have sold their house and car to pay heavy fees to Haosheng. She says she believes in Farid. He will earn once he is in a better place and will build a house. Then they all will live together again. Kosro doesn't believe this much in Farid's capability. They are on road again. Mother is going through a photo album. She photographed Farid's pee staining the bed whenever he peed as a toddler. She wants him to take it along as a memory. She jokes that it will be a piece of art in the country he is going to. Kosro suggests funny names for the photo collection. The child starts singing an amusing poem about him and his brother. Farid has eyes on the road and is driving while his ears listen to his little brother sing, to his loving mother's laugh and his father cracking jokes. A tear rolls down his cheeks. Nobody knows. They have stopped again. Kosro has tied a scarf around his jaw and tied it in a knot over his head. It is to lessen his toothache. He is standing outside the toilet while the child is using it. Mother and Farid are sitting together on a wooden bench. They look amused by the child's comical talking from within the toilet. Mother has lit a cigarette. She smokes and lets Farid smoke it in between. 
She asks him to cut down his smoking habit once he is in another country. She says he smokes too much when he is watching a movie. He says okay, he will not smoke. She asks about his favorite movie. He mentions 2001, A Space Odyssey. He finds it very soothing and relaxing. His mother asks what happens at the end of this movie. He says the hero goes deeper into the darkness and his spaceship all alone. She blurts it out, what she has been trying to hold inside. She asks him to not go. Farid looks as if he was dreading this. He quickly gets up and leaves. He sits in the car, lights a cigarette and listens to a song on the stereo. Kosro has brought his cell phone secretly, hidden inside his cast. He takes it out to call Haosheng to inform him that they are on their way and to assure him about the payment. Kosro shoves the phone back in the cast after removing the SIM. He goes to sit beside his wife on a bench near a shop. She is lost in thought. They can hear the song Farid is playing in the car. Kosro starts lip-syncing while looking at his wife admiringly. She smiles and joins him in singing. The child comes running and sits with them. They look at Farid, sleeping with half of his body sticking out of the car window. The singer talks about how much he loves his beloved and how he needs nothing when his beloved is with him. Mother walks up to Farid and cuts a lock of his hair while he is asleep. He wakes up and asks her to stop being emotional. He asks all of them to go home. His mother looks at him questioningly at the mention of home. They had given up their home. A sacrifice for Farid. She takes a walk away from the rest area. She looks distressed. Breathes in the air and exhales to gather herself together. She let the leaves on a tree touch her face while she smiles. She sees Jesse running towards her. The poor dog is tied to a plastic chair. She unties him and lets him lie on her lap. She tells the dog not to run for it will exhaust him. She says she is worried about her youngest son who will be inconsolable seeing Jesse pass away. She pets the ill dog and talks to him. She frets over her husband for not taking the dog to the clinic. She thinks he is faking his leg injury. The car stops on reaching her. She calls Kosro out for not finding a better thing to chain the poor dog than a chair. The child is crying for Jesse. He thought he is lost. He holds Jesse and starts talking to him. Mother gets inside the car. Farid says she has ruined his hair. She asks him not to make a mountain out of a molehill. Kosro repeats the cockpit drill steps for Farid. Farid says he already has followed them and starts driving. His mother asks him to ignore his dad. They stop near a flock of sheep. A shepherd is an old man who is very talkative. Mother and the child gets out of the car to choose the sheep they are supposed to buy. Seems like this is something they need to do as part of the plan. The plan to smuggle their son out. It is the spot where someone will come to guide them on where to go further. Someone who is Haosheng's man. The shepherd helps Haosheng and acts as a marker. He asks Kosro about his leg. Kosro is irked by his unnecessary questions. The shepherd asks Kosro to choose a sheepskin and buy it. Looks like it is his commission. Haosheng's man is on the way here. The shepherd has placed a man to signal him. He is here on a motorbike. A mask over his head, masking his face. He stops near the car and asks who is the traveler. Mother points at Farid. He asks about the sheepskin. The shepherd asks him why he is late. The man snaps at the shepherd and asks him to mind his business. He points towards a straight road and tells the mother to drive in that direction. It will take them to a specific junction. They need to be in a village near that. Mother wants to ask something but he kickstarts his bike and storms away. An uncomfortable silence falls upon the family while they sit still watching the bike speeding off. The child asks Kosro about the man in the mask. He thinks he is a villain from Batman's movies. He begins to tell his theory of who the man is. Kosro asks him to shut up. Kosro is angry at the shepherd for selling the sheepskin at such a higher price. They have reached the junction and now don't know which way to go. There is one way to the left and the other to right. Farid is out trying to see the right way to go. The child is scratching his father's itches on his leg with the antenna. Kosro asks his wife why she didn't ask for specific directions from the man. She sarcastically asks why Kosro couldn't do it himself. They start bickering. The child asks where Farid is. Kosro says he plans to eat Farid. The child says Farid's meat must be very bitter. Mother smiles. She says no, it will be very sweet. Kosro says even a cockroach mother finds her cockroach son handsome. She laughs and gets out of the car to go for Farid. She asks Farid to let her give him a hug. She jokes with him. Farid gets away, saying he is no kid. He comes back to the car and tells his dad that the right path is a U-turn. A minibus passed by. Mother waves to the driver to stop. She asks the driver about a village nearby. The driver asks them to follow his bus as the village is on his route. The child jumps into the bus and refuses to get off. Kosro is glad to spend some of the travel without getting annoyed by the child. The bus sets off with the car behind it. Kosro rests his head against the window in the back seat and feels relieved in absence of his hyperactive little son. Mother is worried about feeding too many lies to the little one in an attempt to hide the dark realities behind their trip. Kosro says the child could have revealed the information and jeopardize everyone. Farid wonders what his parents are going to tell his brother once he has left. Mother says they will tell him that Farid has eloped with his bride and will be home someday. He is a happy child and will not grieve for too long. Farid asks his parents if they will be okay after his departure. Mother says all will be okay and they will be fine. Farid doesn't believe that. He says he did request his mother not to weep during this journey but she did. 
He doesn't want his parents to lose sleep because of him. Mother says she didn't intend to lower his spirits by weeping. She asks him to keep his distance from the bus for safety. Farid says her husband has asked him to stay closest to the bus. Their arguments over trivial things speak of stifled worries and nuanced love. They are in the village the masked man had told them about. The villagers know about trafficking. They asked Farid to go to the other side of the hill and join other young men who are there for the same purpose. Farid starts to go. The child runs after him. Mother stops him and diverts his attention to the cattle nearby. Kosro has lit a cigarette and stands against his crutch. His wife asks him to go with Farid. Kosro doesn't budge. She looks at him with her hands on her hips. Kosro says he is going. Kosro limps over the hill to the other side. He sees Farid sitting with other boys near a lake. Kosro sits on a boulder near a lake closer to him. Farid signals him to go away. Kosro ignores him and takes a bit of lake water to drop over his aching tooth. Farid comes to sit beside him. Farid says that they will be quarantined somewhere and will be brought back after two days to bid farewell to families. Farid asks his father to head back to Tehran with the mother and kid as the process is going to take two days. Kosro looks sternly at him. His wife won't go until he reaches the border safely. The father and the son look at each other. A gaze that lasts a couple of minutes. A lot of reticent sentiments are conveyed. Kosro asks him to fetch him two apples from a tree. He asks Farid not to show his emotions to his mother. She is already very stressed. Kosro throws away one apple and splits the other in two. He gives one to Farid and eats the other. Farid says he is worried about the house they have given on mortgage. Farid asks his father to see a dentist once they are back home. Then he and Kosro squabble for a while. It is a very comical one. A man on a bike has come to take Farid with the promise that he will bring him back after two days to say his goodbyes. Mother gives Farid his backpack and sheepskin. Kosro is standing a bit farther from the biker with the parked car and restless child. His wife beckons him to come and meet Farid. The biker says the bag is too heavy. Mother runs to take some stuff out of it to lighten it. Kosro ties the child to a tree trunk to make him stay away and limps towards Farid. He hugs Farid and assures him that Haosheng is a reliable man. Farid mounts the bike behind the man with his bag. Mother runs to wrap a shawl around Farid. The biker has told them the place to camp for the next two days. There are other families there as well. Mother drives the car to the spot and unloads it. They set up the tent. The child starts playing with the little girl there. At night, the child stands with his mother to stare at the starry sky. He is worried as he has noticed Jesse being frail. Mother distracts him by talking about the beautiful sky. The child prostrates and kisses the earth, thanking God. He goes to lie on the chest of Kosro, who is in a sleeping pod by the fire. The child asks about Farid. Kosro says he has run away. He will bring a Batman mask for him and he will meet Batman as well. The child says Superman isn't good enough. Kosro agrees. The child wants to know if Batman will let Farid drive his car. Kosro says Batman's car is too expensive to give to an irresponsible person like Farid. The child says that the car is the coolest one and costs millions of dollars. He and Kosro continue their innocent discussion while the mother sits near the fire and looks up at the starry sky. A tear trickles down from the corner of her eye. The men on bikes come to the camping site to inform them that the boys have crossed the border. The families are angry at the men for not bringing them for final goodbyes as per promise. Farid's mother weeps at Kosro's feet. The next morning, the child wakes up and prostrates to kiss the earth. He is grateful to God for the beautiful scenery. Kosro gives him bread. He goes to hug his mother from behind and calls her cute. She says she loves him and asks him to play with a girl he has befriended here. He scampers away happily. Kosro's and his wife's eyes meet. Her eyes are swollen from weeping all night. They acknowledge each other's pain. The pangs of separation from their eldest son. On the way back to Tehran, the mother is driving the car. Jesse is and Dickie. Kosro is in the back seat while the child is enjoying the air, his head sticking out of the sunroof. Three of them dance and lip sync to the Persian song Day R. A song about a beloved gun away. A song about the pain of separation. Mother weeps and beats herself in agony. No one notices amid the blaring stereo. The child climbs over the seat to take Jesse out in front. Jesse has passed away. The child cries for the help of his father. The ending is melodramatic. Kosro is burying Jesse. Mother sits nearby, holding the child. Tears flowing from her eyes. She weeps for Farid. She doesn't have to lie to her little one. Jesse has given her an excuse. To shed the tears she has been holding back all along. The movie ends with another melodious and sad Persian song. A patriotic one. It is about the young Iranian people leaving their country when it needed them the most.